Have you ever wondered how hackers can steal your data from websites in cases like these? Well, one of the most common ways they do this is with a vulnerability called SQL injection. But what the f is SQL injection? This will be the first video in a series where I'll be covering the root cause of the vulnerability, how you can practically hack and learn to exploit it yourself, and also how you can defend against it. But first, let's break down what you need to understand before we can even get into the hacking part. Every time you visit a website, it's likely connected to a database. A database is like a giant digital filing cabinet where information is stored. Now, to get or change anything in that database, the website has to use a language the database can actually understand. That's where SQL comes in. It stands for Structured Query Language, and it's the language that web applications use to interact with databases. Most websites use what's called a relational database. This is just a fancy way of saying that the data is structured in tables consisting of rows and columns. To get or change specific info from these tables, like a product's price, the web application needs to send a SQL query to the database. Here's an easy way to picture this. Let's say Alice is shopping at the grocery store and wants to know the price of bread. Alice is like the application, and the counter at the store is like the database table. Alice just asks the clock, what's the price of bread, and the clock tells her. In simple terms, that's how SQL works. You send a query to the database, and you get or change the data that you need. For example, the SQL query to get the price of bread might look something like this. Now, this is a simple query. Get the price from the table called counter where the item is bread. It sounds easy, right? Not so fast. SQL can get a lot more complicated, and there are a lot of variations of SQL, such as MySQL, MSQL, Postgres, and many more. But the basic syntax and functions often remain fairly similar between each one, and that's all you need to know for now. So what is SQL injection? Now, we just established what SQL is and how web applications make SQL queries to talk to databases to retrieve or modify data. But here's the twist. What if an attacker was able to sneak their own SQL queries through the web application and to the database? In a nutshell, SQL injection is a web application vulnerability that arises when user input is allowed to insecurely make its way into SQL statements sent by the application to the database. That was a bit of a mouthful, so let's break it down into simpler terms. The previous query we used to retrieve the price of bread was what we call a static query. This means that the parameters in the query, in this case the item parameter, is fixed to the value of bread. As a result, the query isn't flexible and doesn't change. No matter what, it will always return the price of bread. But in the real world, web applications need to dynamically react to user input and provide data as requested. Think of a search bar on a web page. The data returned by the search is going to differ based on what the user searched for. If a web app isn't careful about how it includes user input in its queries, a bad actor can inject their own SQL commands into the query. Suddenly, instead of just searching for bread, they could trick the database into revealing or even changing sensitive data. Let's take a look at how all this might work. Now that we've covered what SQL injection is, we're going to move forward into a couple of practical examples where you can actually go and hack along with me now in this video and we can maybe attempt to exploit some real world SQL injection vulnerabilities. So for this we're actually going to be using portswigger.net. Now, Portswigger is a really fantastic resource that effectively allows you to experiment with web application security in a safe and ethical environment because they provide a bunch of vulnerable labs that you can actually go ahead and attempt to solve, which contain various application security vulnerabilities ranging from basics like SQL injection all the way to complex vulnerabilities like prototype pollution. So I would encourage you to go ahead and make an account on Portswigger. The best part about this is it is all completely free. So I'm going to drop the links to all the labs that we will be solving in this video. And we're going to go ahead and actually attempt to access this lab. Now, 
Accessing the lab over here is effectively going to bring us into a vulnerable web application. Now, I also have Burp Suite configured on the right over here, and Burp Suite is a web application proxy. Now, what that means is it allows me to actually intercept the requests from my browser to the web server and the responses from the web server to my browser, and I can then modify those requests and responses on the fly, which really helps with testing for applications security vulnerabilities. Now, it's not necessary to use Burp Suite for today's exercises. You can do all of the hacking here through the browser, but I like to use Burp Suite because it gives me a lot of insight as to actually what is happening behind the scenes with the HTTP requests and responses that are being sent. So without further ado, let's explore the site a little bit. So if I just click on view details, we can see that we are on some kind of product page over here. It seems to be some sort of storefront. And that immediately kind of tells me that maybe this website is using some kind of backend database where the product information or pictures are getting retrieved from the backend and then sent through to the front end according to some kind of SQL query. And that is very interesting because if we observe the URL over here, we can actually see that there's a product ID parameter which appears to be user controlled. So we can just go ahead and change that from six to five. And my assumption here is that we're probably gonna get a different product displayed to us over here. Yeah, that makes sense. So if this is using some kind of backend database, one easy way to test for SQL injection is just to either put a single or a double quote into your parameter over here. And I'm gonna explain why that is after we actually cover the practical hacking portion of this. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stick a single quote in there and then I'm just going to submit that to the server. And we get an invalid product ID. Now that doesn't really tell us much. Um, we could go ahead and test for something like blind SQL injection, but that's actually a little bit out of scope of what I wanted to cover in the video today. I'll definitely make a video about those more advanced SQL injection attacks later on, but for now, we're just going to be covering basic SQL injection. So it doesn't look like this is actually vulnerable to SQL injection. So we're going to go back to the homepage of the site and we're going to explore around a little bit more. We can also see that they have a refine your search category with some sort of product categories over here. So I'm gonna click on gifts over here and you can actually see this parameter category in the top of the URL over here. So that's very interesting to me. Let's actually stick another single quote in there and we'll see what happens when we submit this to the server. Now, this is interesting. We get a, an internal server error. Now, that actually tells me quite a bit because it tells me that something about what I submitted to the server has caused something to go very wrong on the back end. Now, that's a good thing for finding a SQL injection because we can directly correlate the fact that we submitted a single quote over here with the fact that something has gone wrong now on the back end. We don't have much more information to go off over here, but we can just make the assumption that this might be vulnerable to SQL injection. With this in mind, I am now going to use Burp Suite. So I'm going to turn intercept on. Now, before you can actually do this, you need to set Burp Suite up as a proxy. It's very easy to do so. Uh, I'm not going to cover that in this video because there are plenty of those kind of tutorials out there. But without further ado, I've turned intercept on and we're actually going to go ahead and we're going to resubmit this request over here. And you can see that came through quite quickly here on our proxy. So we're just going to right click here and we're going to go send to repeater. Now we can then go ahead and click intercept off and forward those requests through. And then we can go ahead and click on our repeater tab over here. Now the repeater tab is essentially a functionality in Burp Suite, which allows you to just repeat requests to a server. And it's very useful because if you're testing for something in application security and you want to modify this request a bit and then send it on to see what happens, the repeater makes it very easy to do so. So we're going to go ahead and click send over here and we can see we get the full HTML response from the server, including a 500 internal server error status code. So now I'm going to test a little bit more in depth for SQL injection. Now, some of you may have noticed that this gifts has a weird percent %27 next to it. And that's a bit different from the single quote that we actually injected in the URL. 
And the reason for that is because that is just the URL encoding for a single quote. If we actually highlight this, you can see if it's decoded from URL encoding, you get a single quote. And why we need to URL encode stuff is because HTTP or the Hypertext Transfer Protocol follows a very specific set of formatting guidelines. And if you break those formatting guidelines, then the server isn't actually going to be able to pass that HTML request and it's just going to result in an error. So to ensure that we stick to those guidelines, you see normally if you submit something through your, your URL, your browser will handle the URL encoding of that URL. But because we're actually having a look here at the raw request in Burp Suite, we need to do this ourselves. But Burp Suite is very easy. It actually makes it fairly simple to do this. You're just gonna right click and you're gonna go down to this option URL encode as you type. And we're just going to click that. So. We're actually going to put in a new payload now to test for SQL injection. So we're going to put in a single quote and then we're going to put in a space and then or space one equals one and then two dashes after it. So if we actually select this and you see the raw unencoded, it is single quote space or one equals one. And we're gonna actually go ahead and send that through to the server. And we actually get a 200 okay, and you can immediately see here, this came up with congratulations, you solved the lab. So what actually happened here? So we can have a look quite easily at what happened here. If we just take this exact payload and we're just going to submit this in the URL as well, we're just going to go all one equals one, and then two dashes and a space after that and we're gonna submit that through. And all of a sudden, there's a bunch of data that gets returned over here. So why is that? What we just did is a very common SQL injection payload. But what does the payload or one equals one actually do? Well, it's quite simple. OR is an operator in SQL that is used to filter records based on more than one condition. If we take our price retrieval example from earlier, the OR statement would allow you to fetch the price of more than one item at a time, like if you were to get the price of bread or apples. The 1 equals 1 part of the attack is also quite simple. 1 equals 1 is a statement which always evaluates to true because, big surprise, 1 is in fact equal to 1. The two dashes after 1 equals 1 are comment characters that are used to comment out the rest of the original query so that the attacker's query overwrites it. Let's have a look at what happened when we used this on the lab earlier. The original query used in the lab to retrieve the category was this. We were able to inject our payload into the category parameter, and this resulted in the query changing to the following. Remember, because of the comment characters we injected, everything after the payload is commented out and can effectively be ignored. Now, instead of selecting all release products where category is equal to gifts, we select all items in the products table, which is exactly why all of that data got returned to us. Now, let's see if we can take this one step further. So now we have a bit of a better understanding of what that all one equals one attack actually does. And one of the interesting things about that attack is retrieving data is one function of it, but often that ends up integrating into some kind of login functionality for an application. Because a login functionality for an app probably uses SQL as well to select from the database which user and password is actually being used. So we can actually abuse that if the application is vulnerable to SQL injection with the exact same or one equals one payload to hopefully attempt to bypass the authentication on this application. So I'm gonna go ahead on this port swigger lab and I'm gonna go ahead and access the lab over here. And we get a very similar sort of storefront to the previous lab that we covered. And the only difference is that this one now has a my account um, page over here. 
and this just presents us with a typical login form. Now that login form as I mentioned is probably bound to some kind of SQL query on the back end which attempts to retrieve the user and password from the database to match that login to some kind of account okay. So we're going to go ahead and just put in test and test over here and just log in and see what happens and we can immediately see we get an invalid username or password. But what actually happens if we go ahead and put a single quote in for the username just like we have tested in the past and we immediately get an internal server error again which is a pretty promising sign that something might be going wrong on the back end as we mentioned previously. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to use a similar payload to the previous one or one equals one with our comment characters there and just space after that and I think it doesn't actually matter what you put in for a password here. So we can go ahead and catch this in burp suite. It doesn't really matter for the demonstration over here but we can just go send this through to repeater if we need to. It's a good habit to get into just so that if you need to test further and try out more payloads you have that in your repeater tab over here. And we're just going to go ahead and turn intercept off to forward the request and immediately you see we have been redirected through to a login and we've apparently logged in as administrator. So what has actually happened here? We just bypassed authentication with SQL injection using the very same all one equals one payload that we previously used to dump all items in the products table. The process behind this is essentially the same too. When we logged into the application, the SQL query on the back end looked something like this. The database will then retrieve the information from the users table relating to that particular username and password combination. But when we injected our payload, the SQL query changed to this. In exactly the same way as before, the comment characters get rid of the latter half of the query and we are left with a query that will retrieve the user data of the first entry in the table. This entry happens to be the administrator's account which is why we logged in as them. With this kind of authentication bypass via SQL injection, we can also specify a particular user that we'd like to access. For example, if we wanted to log in as the user Carlos, who was a legitimate user on the site, I could just change the query by submitting Carlos as the username and then omitting the OR1 equals 1. Remember that if an application is vulnerable to SQL injection, an attacker can effectively rewrite everything that comes after the injection point in the query, allowing them a huge level of control over the database. So, with all this in mind, what's the root cause of SQL injection? It's actually quite simple. It comes down to the way queries are written. Programmatically, queries are typically written as strings. The problem comes in though when user input is placed into a variable and then directly concatenated onto that string. The issue with this approach is that it allows an attacker to add single or double quotes which effectively break the syntax of that string. Once the syntax is broken, the attacker can simply modify the contents of the string and therefore the entire SQL query to whatever they like. But if that approach sucks and causes SQL injection, what's the alternative? Now that's something we're going to be covering in the next video alongside some more complex SQL injection techniques such as time-based and boolean SQL injection. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and informative, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel for support, as well as clicking the notification bell to make sure you're kept up to date. We've got a really cool pipeline of content coming up and I'd hate for you to miss it because of YouTube's bullshit. Anyway, thanks for listening, until next time.